Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the paintbrush. Okay, you have decided on the paint you want to use. You have your gallon of paint, you go into the paint store, you look at the paintbrush aisle, and you say to yourself, which one should I select? Okay, that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Dan Frost from HGF Painting, the fine art of painting, and this is Talk Shop with Frost. So look, I can understand walking into the paintbrush aisle can be very overwhelming. So what we're going to try to cover today on the, on the video is what type of bristles to use, what shape of bristles, okay, um, what size brush to use, and how to clean your brush to preserve it for another job. Okay, the first thing you want to consider when you're choosing a paintbrush is what are you going to use it with? Are you going to use it with oil-based paint? or water-based paint, okay? We'll go over oil-based first. You want to use a natural bristle brush with oil paint, all oil paints, okay? Um, it's also called a china bristle brush, and it looks similar to this brush. It, it's a little dark in color. You can also get um, clear, you know, blonde type uh, bristles. This happens to be a combination of ox hair, and china bristles, all right? You can use it for oil primer, you can use it for oil trim, you can use it for clear coat. Um, if you're gonna use an oil primer like, um, or an alcohol-based primer like bin to seal up a water stain, just get yourself a cheap chip brush. It's made with china bristles, but it's not for finish coat, it's just for touching up uh, water stains, okay? They're very inexpensive, called a chip brush. So remember, for oil-based paint, you need a natural bristle brush. You cannot use it with water. Do not use it to water. Do not clean it with water ever, okay? Okay, so now you're gonna use water-based paint, all right? You wanna use a nylon brush, a polyester brush, or a nylon polyester blend brush. Now, all the major paint brush manufacturers have their own specific formulas for their blender brush. Our brush of choice is the Corona. This Corona Cortez brush has a blend, uh, it's a polyester, uh, I'm sorry, it's a nylon uh, and um, Orel blend, it's called Timex, okay? Another manufacturer might have a different blend. But just remember, you want a nylon polyester blend brush for water-based paint. Okay, let's talk about the shape of the bristles, okay? Basically, you have an angled brush, angle bristles, that is good for cutting in walls, um, cutting in trim, okay? Smaller angled brush is good for window sash. The other shape is a straight across. That's good for clapboard siding, bigger areas, okay? The other shape you want to be concerned about is the tapered end of the brush. A good brush will have a tapered end at the very bottom of the brush and that allows for really good leveling of the paint, okay? Okay, the next thing to consider is the width size of the paintbrush, okay? What size do you want to use for your project? All right, they come in multiple different sizes, but the bell curve sizes are one inch to four inch, okay? So if you're going to be doing window sash, you want to use a one inch or one and a half inch brush, okay? If you're going to use uh, trim or cutting on walls, you want to use two inch or two and a half inch. Now, whether you go two inch or two and a half inch, try it out. See what you're comfortable with, okay? You might have smaller hands, so a two inch brush might work better. A uh, bigger hand person might, might use a two and a half. So, so just get comfortable with your brush, okay? For a bigger area, for furniture or for siding out exterior, you might want to use a three inch or a four inch brush. Okay, so let's say that you've used some oil-based paint for some trim in your house, all right? You've selected your brush, your Oxair brush. You've finished your trim, you're ready to quit for the day. You want to take your brush and clean it out right away. You want to get a bucket, okay? You want to have another bucket, okay? The bucket, first bucket, you want to put a little bit of paint thinner, probably an inch of paint thinner in there. And you want to stamp your brush in there 
Okay, clean out the first bit of it, okay? And then you want to take a spinner like this, okay? And you want to put it in the brush, all right? You want to take this paint thinner and pour it into the empty buck, bucket, put some clean paint thinner in, and clean out your brush again, spin it in the butt, bucket, clean it out again, spin it in the bucket, get some clean paint thinner, and keep doing it again until your brush is clean. Once it's clean, every brush, good brush, comes with a paint cover, paint brush cover. You want to put it back in your cover, all right, and save it for the next day. That's for the oil brushes, all right. For latex brushes, you want to get some hot water or warm, you know, doesn't have to be really hot, but get some lukewarm water and clean out your brush. Do the same thing, put it in the spinner, spin it up. If you don't have a spinner, you can use your hands like this, okay? All right, again, spin it out under the faucet, tip the brush upside down, get it clean. If it gets crusty, take a wire brush, small wire brush, and clean it, or a brush comb, okay? And then spin it out again, put it in your paint cover, and save that for another day. It's really important to keep your brushes clean, not only for it to last long, but your next paint job will be nice and clean without any, any um, leftover paint in it. Well, that does it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button below. I'm Dan Frost from HDF Painting, the fine art of painting. This has been Top Shop with Frost.